What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So today I want to make a follow-up video to the one I made a couple weeks ago based on the turbo actuator on my 20 here behind me. Now, if you guys watched that video, you've seen I've gone through several actuators now on this truck. And after talking to some people, I found out some more information about it and I want to go over it some more because basically it's stuff I just figured out about. And I figure I pass the knowledge along to you guys. Now this is more to do with a modified turbo such as Stealth, a Danville, any of those types of drop-ins, Dan's Diesel for the L5P platform. If you have a stock turbo, this most likely doesn't pertain to you, but what I found out is for whatever reason on these L5P trucks, they are finicky when it comes to new turbo drop-ins and the way the vanes work. Now, on my LBZ a while ago, I was having some issues with my vane positioning sensor, so I put a new one, new one of those in there. And with those, people say, oh, you have to relearn the veins, and some people say you don't. With that, I put it in, I just drove, and it relearned the veins fine. Technically, the same thing should go um, with the L5P platform. I guess that's not the case. Now, I talked to Duramax Tuner, which is the ones that sold me my Stealth Turbo, and they said the same thing. You don't need to do a vein relearn. You know, just drop it in there, and the veins will relearn on their own. Come to find out, for whatever reason, these turbos... Um, anything aftermarket, I guess it's just causing the veins not to relearn the way they should. And I guess the truck is going to drive a lot better after you do a vein relearn procedure on them. So basically that's what I'm going to do today is try to go ahead here with my MDI-2, hook it up. Now GM came out with a whole new software platform. Basically used to be able to just go on AC Delco's login. Now they came out with TechLine Connect. So we're going to try to hook up that hook up to that today run through the the vein relearn procedure and you know see if we can get the veins to relearn hopefully make my truck not sound like a fixed vein anymore make my turbo run the way it should and also get the messages off my dash i'm hoping that's going to be the issue to my problem because like i said i really hope it's not another actuator you know i'm going to try to do the relearn procedure but if that doesn't do it, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and swap a new actuator in. I have a couple new ones sitting over here off my old turbo, somewhere over here. I forget where I have them. I got to pull off my old turbo, but I do have one. But, you know, I figured it's worth a shot in the dark. Let's try to hook up, try to relearn and see if that makes it go off. But if not, you know, I'll just throw the new actuator on there. So without further ado, let's try to hop into this and try to reset these veins. All right, so I'm going to go ahead here quick and pop the hood. I did not get my piping kit on yet um, for the truck just because I've been waiting to, you know, get this actuator thing situated. Sometimes it's a pain in the butt to get this out. Sometimes there's not enough room back in there and a lot of times it's easier to pull the turbo. So I just want to make sure that was all good before I have to put the piping in here. Go ahead and get, get everything dented up by pulling it in and out 50 times. I'm all about doing it once and done. So what I'm going to do real quick is just unplug the actuator and plug it back in. Just make sure the connection is not corroded or anything. It should be, you know, 100% good because I don't drive my truck in the winter. And basically, as you can see under my hood, it looks brand new under here. So I'm going to go ahead real quick, get that pulled out. Um, unplug and plug in all my Knox sensors. Um, right now, I still haven't put in the Knox plugs for my truck. Um, basically, when I first got it for the 2020s, there wasn't Knox plugs out yet. And I just left all the factory sensors in place. And basically for 20,000 miles, I haven't had a single issue. Um, the only thing is these Knox plugs still kind of heat up. So at some point I do want to get the bypass plugs put in the Knox plugs. But like I said, for 20,000 miles, I haven't had an issue. And I'm not one to touch anything unless it's giving me problems. So kind of just let that be. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead here, get this unplugged, clean it out, spray some electrical cleaner in there. And, you know, just make sure everything on the CAN bus circuit is good before we go ahead and reset this. So I'll go ahead real quick, unplug the batteries get that clean and then we'll hop in the truck and try to get these veins reset. So for you guys that haven't seen the previous video, I'm talking about my whole turbo actuator problem. Right now my turbo veins aren't working the way they should. When I start the truck, it sounds like a fixed vein. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it for you guys real quick. Just to recap. As you can hear how deep my truck is, it comes up engine power reduced and service emission systems on my dash with the check engine light. So I took the sensor out under the hood for the turbo. I cleaned it, put it back in, hooked the batteries back up and same thing on the dash. So go ahead right now, hook the tool up and try to get this thing reset. So just being my luck, I've had this tool now, this MDI2 GM tool 
for about two years, I would say. The only time I really used this thing was when I first got my truck and I was messing around with the immobilizer. That's really the only time I used that tool for my truck. And of course, now I go to hook it up and it's not communicating with my truck for whatever reason. And I updated all the software on my computer. I just think the tool isn't turning on. Normally, when you turn it on, uh, the power button here lights up. But for whatever reason, it was not lighting up. So what I'm going to do tonight is go online and get another one of those MDI 2s ordered. And hopefully it's in by next week. And we go ahead here and I can show you guys the exact procedure on how to reset that. And hopefully I can get that reset. And if everything works out, we'll probably make a short little clip. I'll throw it in the video of me getting the piping kit installed. I'll do that all at once. Like I said, I didn't know if I would have to pull the turbo back out or if it's a bigger issue with the turbo because it's really getting annoying and I just wanna get it situated. So basically next week what we're gonna do is try to get hooked up, get that reset, and hopefully we do so I get the piping kit on and get all the stuff under the hood straightened out. So as of right now, I'm just waiting on a couple miscellaneous other parts for the truck to come in and hopefully I can get cranking on it and get the final few things I've been waiting on for it done here shortly within the next couple weeks. Still gotta get the cab lights out and third brake lights, so. A lot of stuff coming up that you know I got caught up with other things so kind of just want to get that done just so I can drive my truck in the spring and be done with it and enjoy it so that's basically about it for this video if you guys are new here be sure to subscribe if you like this video be sure to leave it a big thumbs up be sure to stay tuned for next week so we get everything finished up on the truck but until next time I'll see you guys in the next one take care